that in order to be strong and in order to work towards decolonization that we actually have to actively live a decolonized life as much as we possibly can. We're all on the same journey together. We're reoccupying our lands and we're doing it on our terms. It plays a key role in our survival as people of the forest. It's up to us now, you know, to show our children the way home. Obviously we're stuck in this society where um, so many things are imposed on us and uh, we can't wholly get away from it, but we can do a number of things to be able to strengthen our system and strengthen our laws and strengthen ourselves. And so one of those things is occupying the land, which we've been doing as a family, living on Gidimden territory, unceded Cassia House territory since 2014. It's what the Unistoten are doing by occupying their territories and living on them as they've always done um, for the past 10 years and what more and more Indigenous communities are doing. The site that we're on, you know, uh, it used to home at least four of our uh, ancestral home sites and uh, now we're looking at reoccupying it and uh, rebuilding the village there that got destroyed fight on the land there by Unistotan and the Gidimdan and uh, Laksamasu are, uh, are really important. Canada has just trying to been squashing us and squashing us for the last 150 years, you know, and uh, we're still here and the pushback is going to keep on happening. We do need locations like this to, to create an awareness of our cultural identity. With LNG coming in, it's just it's a fine picture of total destruction. That's the sad part of our uh, of what we we're fighting about. We don't consider ourselves radical or um, protesters. We're simply Wet'suwet'en. We have a clan system specifically to properly manage and properly live on our land in a sustainable way. All of us uh, were working, you know, at uh, developing this community. And it's not, uh, it's not a camp. It was historically a community and that's what it's going to be in the future. The Wet'suwet'en are indeed united in this fight. And we aren't going to let those pipelines come through our land. I've talked to quite a few people from out east where the fracking fields are and uh, one lady had come to one of our events. She just said, please, please keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop whatever you do. And she just felt so disempowered by what has gone on in their community because she said, you know, we didn't fight hard enough. She felt guilty. We didn't fight hard enough. We could have done more. We shouldn't have accepted it. And I feel like it's not the fault of any community because we see like the restrictions and the forcefulness of industry and government and the RCMP. And so when I think about like a community that, you know, so-called failed at protecting their territory, I can relate to all of the things that you know, they do to you to make you fail, like all of the ways that they try to make you fail. And so she just said, if we could have foreseen what actually would happen in our community, if we could have foreseen the devastation that happened in our community and to the land, we would have fought harder. No matter what the cost is, you have to keep going.